Today's video is all about Soviet aviation. Many of you may be unfamiliar with this, but I want to show you what's flying on a Russian plane, a Soviet airplane's like. And I also have the expert of Russian Soviet aviation, Charles Kennedy, with me. Antonov has the world's largest airplane ever. Yes. Well, the Maria, the Antonov 225, yep. and also the Antonov 124, the Rossland transporter. So the size just leave many people wonder how did this thing get off in the air? Tupolev 154. It's a three-engine airplane. It's one of the fastest flying three-engine airplane in the yeah, world. That's true. It was yeah. It was very very fast. The 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 sweep of the wings was was very extreme. So it was like a, yeah like an arrow. What's the best thing about Tupolev 154 to you? For me, well. It was the workhorse of the Soviet Union. Even to this day, um, a third of all air flop passengers ever in history flew on the 154. Um, they built a, nearly a thousand of them, so it was, it was the backbone of the Soviet Union, which, by the way, is a country that spanned 11 time zones. I want to share with you my last Tupola 154 flight. It was a flight from Moscow to a place called Poliarny or Dace which the Tupelo 154 was used because Boeing 737-800 couldn't make the landing. The runway is extremely bumpy and um, lack of maintenance. So the only 154 can do this kind of hard landings.
So the second plane I want to show you guys is recently just retired. It's also operated by Alrosa Aviation from Russia. It is the Tubular 134. This very trustworthy pocket rocket has yeah. done so many trips across Siberia. Yeah. Uh, my last flight on yeah. them was in 2017 from uh, Myrny to Irkutsk. And I want to show you guys how the men are flying the Russian plane. What difference is the Western pilots in compared to the Russian pilots? Why the Russian pilots seems like pulling every muscles they have to operate the plane? It's a good question. I think I mean the airplanes were very uh, basic um, and not a lot of um, what you would call power steering. Um, these were um, it, made it's, for real yeah, pilots. Yeah, real pilots. Fly. The expression like is no, no, no. It's mandrolic. Mandrolic. Yeah, not That's hydraulic. Mandrolic. Yeah, but the the one three four, a real like you say, pocket rocket, very high performance. In fact, um, was even used to train fighter pilots um, before guy, uh, military guys went onto fighter jets. They'd have a, a flights on the one three four for training because it was such a rocket. The next airplane I want to show you is an Antonov 12 four engine turbo prop. Designed probably in the late 50s, early mm -hmm. 60s. Yes, exactly. It's still operational in a lot of countries like Belarus. And yeah. I've flown one with Charles together. Yeah. And uh, I remember they opened the uh, cargo ramp during the right. mid air just to show us the capability, right? Yeah. And then you see all the smoke trail coming out from all the exhaust and engine. That was a great experience. Yeah, really great. Really great. Just the cargo net between you and the sky. Yeah. And what I admire is this true airmanship of the pilots, they work synchronously as a team yeah. to operate this N-12. You've got navigators sitting underneath, you've got yeah. engineer and you've got two pilots sitting on the upper deck. Yes.
Chinese, the Anton of 74. This airplane has two jet engines mounted high on its wing. Um, I was very fortunate. I flown in Iran. And they use the airplanes converting from cargo to passenger. Very lucky I have the GoPro in the cockpit to land and you can see how the footage from how the pilots fly them. favorite airplane in Soviet aviation? I have to say it's the Aleutian 62. Um... It was There's four engines, yes. Soviet premier <laughs> yes. intercontinental airplane. Yeah, Moscow to Havana, Moscow to Pyongyang, to Beijing and yeah, all over Africa. Um, a beautiful looking airplane, uh, like you say, four engines at the back, uh, a real classic. I particularly enjoy sitting towards the end, the rear end of the plane, to listen to the four Solomon D30 engine. It was a symphony, especially towards landing. You can hear different pitch yeah. while the pilot's throttling the landing. It's just amazing it's music to my ears. Lack of materials, lack of technologies, but they have to survive. They had to adapt and yeah. came up with different ways on these airplanes. Mm. Sam, do you remember in North Korea, uh, we flew on the Illusion 76? It's the big jet freighter. Of course, four engine, also same engine as the 62, the solo man. I right, believe. that's exactly right. Solo that's FD30 exactly right. engines. Yep, yep. Um, you know, it's just you're inside a uh, shoebox, basically yeah. take off, and then you can't see. But it's just wow, crazy yeah. noise. This airplane, crazy noise, crazy noise. Yeah. Um, and then I'm going to show you the footage. 
During one takeoff in North Korea, they have to put a lot of weight in the middle, uh, carry lots of stuff to balance the weight because it was not used to have empty weight, just a few passengers inside. Right. I'm really glad that we've flown a cargo plane together. <laughs> I know. Sam, I'm sure you know, but it's interesting to remember that actually the first um, supersonic airliner ever built was not Concorde, it was the Tupolev 144. Um, this is a fantasy livery, Air Corio never had the 144, but Aeroflot did. So I hope you like the video. I am rather glad that I was born in a time when there were still a lots and lots of Soviet Russian aviation going on, but they were very fast disappearing in the sky. I'm glad that I seize the opportunity to fly on these planes now sharing this video with you